Good morning, everybody. Um, I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we're meeting, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, and pay my respects to elders past, present, and emerging. Minister for Petroleum, Honourable Karinga Kua. Minister for Mining, Honourable Sir Anno Palo. Ministers, Governors, Managing Directors, Landowners, ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to be with you today. At ExxonMobil, we are honoured to be a key partner to Papua New Guinea. We extend our appreciation to Anthony Samare, President of the PNG Chamber of Resources and Energy, alongside his councillors and staff. Thank you for providing such a wonderful platform where we can drive key industry updates, conversation and collaboration. Yesterday, you heard from Tara Shandro, the Chairperson and Managing Director of ExxonMobil PNG. She talked about how well positioned we are to support the energy transition in PNG, including a shift to liquefied natural gas. Thanks to this country's high quality natural resources, demonstrated fiscal stability and reliability, as well as its proximity to Asian markets. Last year, when I spoke at this conference, I gave an overview of the Pingyang development. And today, I'm going to give you an update on the project, as well as look beyond to exploration activities that can provide even further growth and expansion. The future of LNG in PNG certainly looks bright. And to understand where Pingyang fits in, I'll first recap the broader set of opportunities that ExxonMobil and our co-venturers are currently progressing. Firstly, the Angore development, which is part of the PNG LNG project, will play an important role in offsetting the natural field decline of the significant Hydes reservoir that underpinned the PNG LNG project. Angore is the only major gas development that is currently under construction in PNG and represents a more than 5 billion kina investment. We are excited that the Angore pipeline scope is nearing completion and drilling operations are progressing. Once complete in 2024, Angore gas will be processed through the existing PNG LNG infrastructure. Our next development, subject to a final investment decision in 2024, is the Papua LNG project. Total Energies is the project operator, and Tomas provided an overview of the project yesterday. As the delegated downstream operator, ExxonMobil will con will expand current infrastructure at our Caution Bay plant to enable processing of nearly six MTA of Papua gas. After Papua, we're planning for the Western Province Pingyang development to be Papua New Guinea's third LNG project. You have heard the Prime Minister talk about the importance to Papua New Guinea of continuous development. The Papua and then Pingyang projects together have the potential to deliver eight continuous years of investment and construction activities, which would provide tremendous economic benefit. Looking beyond Pingyang, there are also exciting exploration opportunities in Gulf Province that we'll discuss in a little bit more detail shortly. Let's now focus on Pingyang. Our journey began over 30 years ago when the Pingyang gas resource was originally discovered. In the years that followed, the field was significantly appraised with a series of wells being drilled and some 100 kilometres of seismic data collected. As you may recall, on the very memorable date of the 2nd of the 2nd, 2022, we marked a significant milestone towards unlocking this 4.4 trillion cubic feet of gas resource with the signing of the Pingyang LNG Gas Agreement. 
This gas agreement provides a clear framework for the Pingyang LNG gas development. And at the heart of this project is a desire to maximise Papua New Guinea's resources to unlock shared benefits for all involved. This achievement was only made possible by working closely with the state negotiation team to understand the aspirations to be achieved by the project. The leadership of Minister Kua, supported by the Prime Minister, was crucial for the mutual success of the gas agreement. Thank you, Minister, for making this project possible. We are both proud and humbled that the state and the Western Province governments continue to show faith in ExxonMobil as a world-class operator to plan and execute the Pingyang LNG project. Pending the final investment decision, the Pingyang project will initially require the constructions of roads, a wharf and logistics infrastructure. This will enable the drilling of wells and the construction of the pipeline that will stretch from the Western Province and tie into the existing PNG LNG infrastructure at Caution Bay. Construction of this pipeline will also allow access to other resources and provide an, upper, uh, an important development conduit to enable further future LNG projects. Some of these were outlined yesterday by Kumul's Managing Director, Wapu Sonk. Further to this, it has the potential to drive significant landowner benefits and generate local employment and business opportunities, as well as support provincial governments in improving services across health, education and infrastructure. So how are we doing this? One significant milestone that was achieved this year was the execution of a revised PRL3 joint venture agreement. This document was previously focused on the exploration phase. Together with our joint venture partners, Santos and JX Nippon, we collaborated and aligned on a new modern governing agreement to provide the framework for planning, construction, and operation of our proposed development. The second major focus area of the team has been reviewing the project concept itself. The rugged location of Pingyang in the Western Province, along with limited access to infrastructure, makes it one of the country's most remote oil and gas developments. While many would see this as an obstacle, we see it as an opportunity. We launched a blue sky study to investigate a technically optimised and commercially viable Pingyang LNG concept. So what is a blue sky study? This process involves taking a cross-functional team from across our global organisation and challenging them to review the project concept without constraints, questioning what is possible, what technology is available, and thinking about what this project could be without limits. This study resulted in our teams developing updated concepts and preliminary technical feasibility that would optimise the project design. This new concept also maximises use of the existing facilities and infrastructure, such as the PNG LNG plant, storage and loading utilities and pipelines. Work is now progressing to mature concepts and confirm their feasibility. This would lead to us undertaking technical, uh, geotechnical logistics and permitting activities. In addition, the team has been assessing how technology such as long range drones and pipeline modelling software can be leveraged to further enhance and plan for the project. An example of this is the use of drones to imp improve access to landforms and capture valuable survey details ahead of when we've got boots on the ground. 
If you look to the indicative timeline behind me and pending progression of Papua LNG, we could see construction commence in 2028 with first gas possibly flowing in 2032. While much work remains to turn the Pingyang project into reality, our team at ExxonMobil remains committed to working with our partners to ensure that we can execute a sustainable and viable project that will deliver benefits to all stakeholders and local communities. We have invested over 1.6 billion kina into a mix of technical, environmental and socio-economic aspects related to Pingyang. Should the, progress, should the project progress into construction, billions of additional kina are expected to be injected into the local and national economy. Just as we've done with PNG LNG, we'll continue a strong focus on national content and the direct and indirect benefit it provides by implementing a coordinated and sustainable approach. The project would support jobs in Western Province and other local provinces with the Papua New Guinean workforce and local businesses benefiting from economic opportunities as well as training and skills development. Early works present opportunities across site preparation, pipeline right-of-way clearing and telecommunication infrastructure. As mentioned earlier, our proven focus on community will see activities aimed at improving education, health and livelihoods. Western Province could also see improvements made to the Karinga airfield, upgrades to the existing wharf, materials handling facility upgrades and roads improvements. And upon completion, the project would make available up to 5% of the gas produced to the Western Province or another agreed location to support the government's electrification efforts. For us, our commitment to Papua New Guinea does not end with Pingyang LNG project. To envisage the possibilities of tomorrow, we must also invest in what's still to be discovered. Yesterday, you heard from the Prime Minister about the new W, which is wildebeest, whale and whitetail, and earlier from Minister Kua about the government's vision on ex exploration. Let me tell you a little bit more about it. Since the commencement of PNG LNG, ExxonMobil, alongside our joint venture partners, have invested more than 2 billion kina into exploration. In mid-2022, just as we came out of COVID, ExxonMobil, without delay, conducted a 300 million kina seismic program in Gulf Province. This was the first ever seismic operation conducted directly by ExxonMobil. The program was a great success and employed more than 1,000 Papua New Guineans over two years. Now complete, we're working with the Minister for Petroleum and Energy and his team on how to advance exploration to prove and quantify this resource through exploration drilling. Exploration drilling and then appraisal wells will enable us to determine the size of the resource. This frontier exploration is high risk. However, we believe that the potential reward is for a possible discovery that could be even larger than PNG, LNG or Papua projects. We would plan to conduct this work with the support of the Minister to enable a possible discovery in 2025. Timing is important, as with focused development, Wildebeest has the potential to commence construction immediately after the completion of Pingyang. This will further extend construction activities in PNG from the eight years we previously talked about to 13 years. This has the ability to accelerate PNG's economy towards the 200 billion kina target by the government. 
Angore, Papua, Pingyang, and then the now famous W wildebeest, doesn't the future of LNG in Papua New Guinea look bright? The exciting series of projects is propelling the country into a prime position to not only support but help lead Asia's energy transition through its demonstrated reliable supply of gas. To the Prime Minister and the Minister for Petroleum and Energy, thank you for your continued faith in ExxonMobil. To our governors, provincial governments, landowners and landowner companies, your continued trust and collaboration is greatly appreciated. Thank you again to the PNG Chamber of Resources and Energy for bringing us together to forge new relationships and expand our business collaboration. I wish everyone the very best for the rest of the conference, a happy Christmas and a very successful 2024. Thank you.